that boo-boo cost Jim Haslam about a million dollars. Then I'll call him in the morning. <laughs> and we'll get started. Uh, it'll be uh, undesignated funds, but we'll put them on the pianos. <laughs> I want to tell you a couple little stories and uh, somewhat of our involvement. <clears throat> uh, I came to the University of Tennessee and back in 1955. That was when tuition was $16 a quarter. Uh, so some of you who are paying, you know, six, seven, eight thousand dollars something like that, I got a, my ag teacher, somebody said a voc, voc, voc tech teacher will go, uh, but I had an ag teacher who thought I should go to college and I had no opportunity to go. So he applied for a scholarship to me and I got a Sears Robot scholarship. So, all my appliances at Sears and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it was $200, and Sandy and I have talked about no matter how much we share with what we've been able to uh, accumulate, we will never pay that $200 scholarship off. Never, never pay it off. Because we wouldn't be here today if Mr. Horn, that's my ag teacher, hadn't saw forth to try to get me a scholarship. So scholarships are one thing. But I would like to tell you a, little, a couple of little stories about our involvement in East Tennessee State. Uh, East Tennessee State has a music department, but like most schools, the music department is way down the list. You understand? Okay? So we're going to work on that. Uh, we get Jim to help us a little bit more on the music and through the business, we get it equal. Okay? <laughs> I always say the music kids go to school to learn to play after the day job. And so much of that is true. A few make it and a few don't make it in their daily job, but they have something that we don't have. They can play music, they can make you smile, they can make the day feel better for you. And so Sandy and I got to know a professor at East Tennessee State, his name is Tom, and he had a group of kids called the Ten Bucksworth, other names. But that was in about 1980, and we got involved with him and supporting them. Uh, and then it came down to uh, we were able to get a company to give us an old used nine footer, and that was in the early 80s. And so it was so bad that the tuner said, We can't do anything with you, you have to get it rebuilt. So we sent it back to the guy who gave it to us and said, you got to rebuild it and send it back. Well, they got mad at me, and I said, well, we're not going to take it like it is. you you got it. you sure. So anyway, Jim McLaughlin, who that was, he paid 27000 in 1981, I think, to get it rebuilt. We paid 63000 a couple of years ago for a couple. You're going to pay probably 75000 so you can see what happens in that I think, in town. Anyway, one of the piano professors came to Sandy one night and said, you think you and Jim would be interested in helping me raise enough money to buy a nine-footer? We got one, but it's an old one, and you guys know the history of it, and so we need to do something about that. So she comes home, and we start talking about it, and uh, so I said, well, how much are we talking about? So first thing led to another. We got on the Internet, found the telephone number for a Steinway guy, Called him, he answered the phone. He was in Dallas, I believe, uh, on his way to Nashville. Well, that started the deal of ending up with a million three at East Tennessee State and 33 pianos. So, uh, tell you another little story about we were at one of our recitals, uh, and so this friend of Sandy, is a, it's a boy at the university, had a lady with him, and I said, to her, I said, are you a student here? And she said, yes, I'm a student. Why did you come here? Because of the pianos. Are you a piano major? No. Well, why would you come? If you got Steinway pianos, the music department has to be good. Okay. So, you know, it's a standard of that. Okay? And so, you know, I think I could back up a little bit when Roger Stevens and I became the, the chair of the development council, uh, some of the people took me over to introduce me myself to him. And so during the conversation, uh, we got to talking about what is your product? Because I was wanting him to say the kids. 
and, and before we got through, that's what he said. The whole product of our school is our students. And uh, the and you see today what the product is. So with an investment in these pianos, we will have more and more of these type of students come to the University of Tennessee. And they'll be able to perform and go on and, and make a name for themselves and for the University of Tennessee. And maybe they'll be like, my scholarship, he's got a scholarship, he'll repay that scholarship many times in his lifetime. But I, I've enjoyed my relationship with the University of Tennessee, and I think it, will, it should go on further and further and further. And I'm looking forward to when you will become an all Steinway school, and that uh, you'll be one of several now in Tennessee. You, Martin has just announced that they are making theirs, but they need to buy one more nine-footer. I told them the other day, you can't start announcing that until you get one more nine-footer. <laughs> so they can do two nine-footers on the stage. They only have one. So I said, by the time you get halfway through the football season, you should find another nine-footer. So now they'll be an all Steinway school with two nine-footers. So it's my pleasure to be a part of this, and I look forward to working with Mr. Haslam to, to get this money to help his wife's cause out. <laughs> So I think, <laughs> I think we can make some phone calls say, and we call him Daddy Haslam, and we call Jimmy Jimmy. So this is Daddy Haslam, and uh, so we'll hope that Mr. Daddy Haslam gets busy on the phone, and we're going to raise this money. So, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be a part of it. Thank you. Since we're telling stories, I have to tell a story uh, that I told a few minutes ago, and that was... Uh, Several months ago, uh, my administrative assistant got a call from the Steinway uh, dealership in Na Na uh, <coughs> Nashville, and they said, uh, we want to come see the chancellor. And I said, uh, I don't really need to see Steinway people. I don't know much about music, and this that in my expertise area. And uh, they said, well, uh, and then she said, uh, Jim Powell said you need to see him and Wayman Hickman said you needed to see them. And I said, if Jim and Wayman said I needed to see them, I'm delighted to see them. <laughs> you see how persuasive uh, Jim is and Natalie, well, uh, Wayman Hickman's the same way. And so when they send somebody to see you, you want to make sure you respond. Uh, this afternoon, I think we've seen examples of the students at the University of Tennessee. They are phenomenal. And our students deserve the very best. And with our new building, we're going to have the very best. And we're looking forward to the completion of that building and the, and the uh, dedication of that building. We've had the groundbreaking. And William said the quality of instruction is magnificent. And so we got the building in place and we got the students in place. The quality of instruction is magnificent. That means the faculty are in place. And what we need is the instruments in place, and that's what this is all about today. Coming all the way from Maryland to choose the University of Tennessee tells you a lot about our music program at the University of Tennessee. There's a lot of good places to study that's probably closer than Tennessee to Maryland, but it's the quality of our faculty. It's the excellence that we do. And I think the, st the statement was made, this is a very ambitious goal to be an all Steinway school with 62 pianos but it's a doable challenge. And we invite you to be part of that challenge and help us reach our goal to provide the very best instruments for our students when we, when we open the Natalie L. Haslam Music Center with all Steinway pianos. We thank you for being here. We hope you'll support our effort. And Natalie and Jim and Sandy and Jim, we greatly appreciate what you're doing to lead this effort. And uh, thank you very much for bringing this to our attention. Thank you very much for saying this is a goal that we will set. And I don't know anybody in this room that doesn't believe that we can accomplish the goals that we set for ourselves. So thank you very much for being here. We do have a reception out here. Thank you, and go ball.